Jobs in focus this week as fresh ADP data showing that the labor market remained resilient. Private payrolls for March coming in higher than expected. And now investors are turning to Friday's big jobs report. Well, today we are taking a look at a portion of the population that's still struggling to get jobs. One in three Americans with a criminal record are having trouble re-entering the workforce. And according to J.P. Morgan Ch Chase, it's sidelining this population is costing the U.S. economy as much as $87 billion each year. J.P. Morgan, in conjunction with the Second Chance, a business, a Second Chance Business Coalition, Business Roundtable, Eaton Corporation, and the Wharton School are co-hosting the second annual Second Chance Month Conference. And today, where business leaders, among others, are examining the state of Second Chance employees employment and offering strategies for continued growth. Here with more from the conference in Philadelphia, we want to bring in Heather Hagenbottom, JP Morgan Chase's Head of Research, Policy and Insights for Corporate Responsibility. It's great to see you here. Obviously, a very important initiative, a conference that you're holding right now in conjunction with others taking place in Philadelphia. But Heather, just taking a step back, talk to us just about the importance of this initiative and the economic impact it's having keeping so many of these people sidelined and without a job opportunity. Well, good morning and thanks so much for having me. It, it is astonishing to think that one in three American adults, people who are employable, have a criminal record and the very existence of that criminal record serves as a barrier to employment. It keeps people out of the workforce. It costs our economy lots of money. We have a low unemployment right now. We need these people to be in the job market and working. And it's been a big priority for us. And, and we're really excited to be here in Philadelphia today, convening business leaders, academics, nonprofits, community organizations to address this challenge. I'm curious then, Heather, how you're working on kind of measuring the success of these initiatives, because we do often see uh, efforts to kind of reskill and upskill folks, but until we change kind of hiring practices on the other end of things, it's difficult to get those folks placed in corporations. So what is your measurement for the success of this effort looking like? Well, that's right. We really do need employers to come together. We need community organizations to support the efforts to educate and support employers who are trying to do this work. So for example, at JP Morgan Chase, 10% of our new hires annually every year since 2019 have been people with criminal records. And that's because we changed our hiring practices. That's because we established partnerships with key organizations in markets where we do a lot of hiring to help educate people on what jobs they're qualified for, how to apply for a role in our firm, and to really raise the awareness of the issue internally for our hiring managers. But we're just one corporation. What we do is important, but we, what we really need to do is scale those efforts with other employers and other businesses. And that's why we co-founded the Second Chance Business Coalition. It was about bringing those C-suite leaders together and talking about not just a commitment, but how do you fulfill that commitment? So we've now grown the coalition to 50 large businesses. We're thrilled that the National Bas Basketball Association has now joined our efforts. And the convening that we're having today is really about how do you do this work? How do you confront challenges? What partners do you need to do to, to really make the change? Heather, talk to us just about the strategy here going forward, raising awareness, obviously getting more businesses on board is making a real difference in the long term. Talk to me, though, about the impact that this has in the short term and how quickly you are able to get more of these people who have been struggling to find jobs, help them get placed in their jobs. Well, it really is about intention and mm -hmm. changing policies as employers to make that happen. And once you do that, you can see results very quickly. One of the one of the things that we observed during the pandemic is that we needed quite a lot uh, after the pandemic, quite a lot of people to reenter the workforce. And a lot of employers said, we need to expand our pool. And they said, how do we do that? How do we reach these people who ha have been barred from uh, opportunities? And so we're really, really focused on the best practices and how we can scale that. And we're also focused on changing public policy and, and reducing some of those barriers that make it so hard for people to navigate this process. Well, Heather, talk to me about the difficulty of navigating the process, because I know that you've mentioned that accessibility to resources that particularly for those who've been wrongfully convicted to get that conviction cleared, it, that's a very difficult and hard to understand opaque process. So what would you hope to be changed to make that process of clearing convictions a little bit more accessible? One of the biggest priorities we have is increasing the number of states who have enacted or have passed what we call clean slate legislation. And what that means is that states ha pass laws and they say after a certain period of time for certain sets of crimes, your record can be expunged. Unfortunately, the process to do so is incredibly 
lengthy, bureaucratic, time-consuming, and expensive. And even in those states uh, where there has been efforts to enact these expungement uh, opportunities, it, it isn't taken up. There's a very, very low take-up rate. What the clean slate legislation does is automate that process so that you don't have to go through an expensive, burdensome, bureaucratic process to do that. And that enables people to overcome a, a huge barrier to employment. And Philadelphia, we're here today, and Pennsylvania was the first state in the country to enact that legislation. We've seen other states do the same, and we're going to continue to support those efforts ac across the country. Heather Hagenbottom, we really appreciate you taking the time on a very busy day that you have right now. J.P. Morgan Chase is head of research policy and insights for corporate responsibility. Thanks, Heather. Thank you.